Here's another video de moi à toi. In the history of bad ideas and bad videos, this is one of the worst. It is the TED Talks of ideas not worth spreading and the fables not worthy to be told. Now, since I opened Pandora's box, let's find the possible problems. I've been watching Smash JT's last few fables and he has been advocating against YouTube channels which spitefully copyright strike other channels. So basically, a similar problem would be faced by businesses that come up with innovations to existing inventions. For example, a patentable new lock on the old mouse trap can lift your business off the ground. But the patent holder can patent strike you and shut you down on the online retailers. But you can lift your patent strike with your one year PPA. But this PPA can also allow specialized counterfeiters to operate legally for a year with no repercussions. So the new problem requires more lawsuits and more costs. The judicial bubble hasn't and may never burst. I wonder if we could buy shares in a judicial ETF and can any of you CFAs, quantitative and derivative experts, really quantify such a fictitious ETF in today's money? Think of this as an easy problem for your spectacular abilities. This can be further debated until we're all blue in the face, but how about we put this burden on the Federal Trade Commission? I think this is a perfect job for the FTC and this may actually work better than that COPA bullshit they placed on us. We may also be over-legislated. Basically, whenever we find a problem, we create a law to solve it. And these laws require other laws. It's like the never-ending story. Maybe this was indeed a terrible idea and I should never have released it into the wild. I should have placed it under lock and key tightly in my stupid ideas suppression tank. Beating on this dead horse, let's create a pork bill that will forever change the judicial system such as no new legislation can be applied until the old underperforming legislation has been nullified, along with its effects. Let's take into account the possible deadlock that could occur. No new laws could be possible because old laws may still be effective. <laughs> and if I haven't lost you yet, let me tell you why it all started. Windows shopping, I stumbled on Slice Engineering Mosquito Hot End Clone. That got me thinking on the cost to market. Slice has nicely laser etched their logo and the patent pending phrase on the heating block. But patent pending or patent holding works wonders in the old economy. Someone in the moon-based New Berlin produces a mosquito replica, they can sell it on Earth and Mars. Even though both have patents on it, the individual consumers can still have access to purchase the replica to the intergalactic web. The only possible way would be for Mars to patent strike the product on the retailer's intergalactic website. Then the retailer has to stop the sale or risk the entire business being blocked on the patent holding destination. And that is leverage. The same way someone on Earth can beam up intergalactically patent infringing products from the Milky Way all the way to Andromeda and Pegasus galaxies and beyond. I'll let you ponder with comments below and I'll continue with my intergalactic fable. And if you stoically put up with this nonsense until now, wait, there's more. The original mosquito looks superior to the clone. In addition, we see the laser etching with the logo and the patent pending phrase. I do have to say that patent pending has multiple purposes here. One is the fact that this innovation is so great it's worthy of a patent. That is my first feeling about it. And that could be also a marketing tool. Patent pending deters the cloner because they can lose revenue due to damages granted in a lawsuit. Patent lawsuits are a burden on businesses, therefore the intergalactic retailers need to add the patent pending strikes to prevent patent infringements in the neighboring galaxies. Or we can let the market decide for itself in between the battered inexpensive clone or the precise engineered Mosquito Prime. Laser etching and quality finishes have certain brand appeal, but also come with the extra cost that may push some consumers to the battered clone. So how about if Slice Engineering kept the costs down with removing all the unnecessary adages, would the reduced cost have allowed Slice Engineering to muscle out of the market any wannabe cloner? And I would really like their opinion on this one. Now here's the counterfeiter mentality. 
I'm damn hungry. I got mouths to feed and wages to pay. I'm nimble, agile, and obscure. I'm the motherfucking kung fu master of cloning the most important features. My R&D is to find out success and replicate it. Saturate the market fast, murder you on cost, and move on. Because I have to live too, along with my dependents, so don't hate the player, hate the game. This is the T-34 tank strategy. Mass produce the T-34 tank to turn the tide and establish yourself as the dominating force in the market. That's how Russia turned the tides against Germany. They insanely produced the T-34s as quick as possible, cutting every possible corner to lower the time of production and costs. The Germans were showboating in pictures, destroyed T-34s and the rough production of these. But the T-34s were slowly turning the tide of the fierce competition. Numbers were winning against sublime quality and German precision. So should have slice engineering kept the costs down or immediately reduced the cost? Or should they maintain the branding elements and high cost and pass those to the customers? Maybe you may have something to add in the functions below. Or just dislike the video and if it reaches a quadrillion dislikes, I'll promise you I'll quit YouTubing. Maybe. So spread your opinions in the comments below, but until then I beat the Monami's farewell and adieu.